faith and belief. And unfortunately, we don't have a lot of knowledge about the 23% of the globe's population that believes in Islam. Some people are pretty certain what that means. President Trump, when he was running for president on the Anderson Cooper show, said, Islam hates us. And at a subsequent TV show, he was asked, do you want to modify that at all? It's a pretty sweeping statement. And he said, no, not at all. It's a whole lot of hate out there. It's always a little feckless to ask President Trump for evidence. <laughs> but he seems to believe that the essence of Islam was expressed by the terrorists at 9-11. Patricia Crone, the great scholar, said, the thing about the uh, people who are carrying out terrorism attacks is that they obviously don't know their own religion. So what can we tell about their religion? Naturally, we should go to the Quran uh, and see what a creed would sound like. You know, in the Gospel of Matthew, they ask Jesus how to pray to the Father, and he gives them the Lord's Prayer. In the Quran, they ask Allah, through Muhammad, how they should pray. And here's, here's one of many creeds in the Quran. We believe in God and in what was sent down to us and what was sent down to Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, and the 12 tribes, and what was given to Moses, Jesus, and all the prophets by the Lord. We make no distinction between any of them, and we devote ourselves to him in all of them. That's a very inclusive creed. Uh, the narrow definers of Judaism sometimes say that the chosen people are the circumcised. And narrow believers in Christianity sometimes say that the chosen people are the baptized. But the Quran says God's chosen people are all the monotheists from the beginning of the creation. Allah says in the Quran that only defensive warfare is just warfare. You can't commit an act of aggression, certainly not an act of terrorism. That's nowhere envisaged in the Quran. And how did, you know, people say, well, jihad means holy war. It doesn't. Uh, there was holy war going on, but it's not in the Quran. There's, that concept is not anywhere expressed in the Quran. And when people say that jihad is holy war or aggressive war or terrorism, that's just plain wrong. Jihad means roughly what zeal means in our culture. And Allah says, for instance, uh, wage jihad for the Quran. That is, preach the Quran. Uh, spread the good word. And getting self-control is an act of jihad. Now, if you get into a just war, you can consider that you promote that zealously as jihad. How did the holy war come up? Well, the verse that is constantly cited is the so-called sword verse. Uh, the, sword, the word doesn't occur there or anywhere in the Quran. It occurs all over the place in the book of Revelation of the New Testament, but nowhere in the Quran. And the, the episode that is often used is that when Muhammad was driven out of Mecca to Medina, uh, and then 
his own tribe, the Quraysh, attacked Medina, and they were able to fight back. But Mecca was a great pilgrimage center for many years because of the Kaaba, the great cubicle temple, holy place. It's still where pilgrims process around when they go there every year. When they were driven out of Mecca, the Kaaba was taken over by pagans, by worshippers of various gods. And the, by the way, the only enemy in the Quran is idolaters, that is, pagan believers in different gods. And when people came in, in caravans to Mecca, uh, and they had driven out Muhammad, they put up idols of their gods in this holy place. It's a holy place that they say had actually been established by Adam's progeny. Uh, then it was wiped out in the deluge, but it was refounded by Abraham. And that's why it's so holy to Abraham's descendants of the Islamic faith. Abraham is, of course, the father of all three faiths. When they went back, Muhammad and his followers, to Mecca, they wanted to strike a truce, like the peace of God in the Middle Ages, in the temple area, and say, no one can kill or fight in this area. And in the sword verse, it says that after four months, you can respond to the people who have attacked you. But after four months, that's the length of the treaty that they had struck. And what they did was ask, while the treaty was in force, what if we are attacked? And they were attacked by the idolaters. And Allah tells Muhammad, you can't fight back in the holy area. You have to observe the truce, even if they don't. But after four months, uh, then you can lie in wait for the ones who had actually attacked you and uh, fight them back. Not their families, not bystanders, not civilians, uh, only the ones who had attacked you. Now, out of that, we get the claim that Islam is fighting a jihad against other faiths. There are no other faiths but uh, idolaters. It's pretty easy to misrepresent Islam because so few have read the Quran. That This book I published is a product of my shame. I was embarrassed. Uh, after 9-11, I was talking with a group of friends, academic friends, and we were wondering, you know, is this really a, an Islamic uh, event, the 9-11 attack? And at some point, people asked, well, who here has read the Quran? None of us have. Uh, and a friend of mine said, Not even you, Gary? I thought you were a student of religion. And I, and I said, yeah, that's the problem. I'm, I'm totally ashamed. Uh, and so I went and have been trying to repair that stupidity ever since. But I've tried in a lot of venues to ask how many people have read the Quran. Dare I do it now? Uh, how many have read the Quran? A minority, certainly. <laughs> uh, well, I don't want to shame you, but I do. <laughs> I think we should all be ashamed. You know, we're, we're throwing our weight around in a world where almost a quarter of the population are Muslims. And not to know, you know, how, how can you say the Islamic State is a false construct, 
if you don't know what true Islam is.